Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. It is Drew here from Lone Fox, and today you might notice I'm sitting at a table, and that is because we have a brand new first episode of a series here that I'm going to be starting on my channel, and it is going to be called Drew It Yourself. Now, I have mentioned Drew It Yourself a couple times in past videos, and it's kind of just a play on words for Do It Yourself or DIY. I also have this picture that I created that says Drew It Yourself. You guys always talk about it, and it's kind of just like a funny phrase, and if you guys didn't know, I actually trademarked the phrase, so... I just needed to have it, you know? So I literally paid to have an entertainment trademark made for that phrase. Cause I was like, Drew It Yourself is like an iconic saying. I'm not gonna lie. So today's actually gonna be the first episode of Drew It Yourself. And some of you guys are like, what exactly is Drew It Yourself? As many of you guys know, I have a DIY channel, home decor, interior design. I love doing all of it. So this series is going to be a little bit more personal. So it's gonna be more like a one-on-one -on -one crafting session, as opposed to me just filming my four projects and voicing them over and kind of whipping through the video, which of course I love creating those videos and I love watching those videos. Videos. However, it's a nice change to kind of pop in, talk to you guys, ask questions, and do just like fun little chatty segments in between my projects. And you also get to see me create them in real time. So yeah, but today's going to be extra fun because this first episode of the Drew It Yourself series is going to be fall themed. I'm a humongous fan of fall and I can already tell that the weather is starting to change a little bit in Los Angeles, which is amazing. I love colder weather. It is my absolute favorite. And today we are going to be creating three super cute DIY fall decor pieces. But I think we should honestly just get started. You guys, I legit have to walk across my table because I'm so cramped in the corner. I just left out such an important part of this video. I'm wearing a shirt that you guys might never have seen on the channel before, and that is because it is part of my brand new heritage collection for Lone Fox, which is going to be launching this upcoming Thursday, you guys. I am so excited. I have not had new merch in over a year. My last merch launch, or my first merch launch, was actually last September. This is a little sneak preview, so keep your eyes peeled and definitely watch this upcoming Thursday's video where I'll be launching and revealing the new heritage collection for Lone Fox. So if you guys did not see my live class with Michaels, I actually taught a class on how to create this fall wreath here. And I absolutely love the way that it turned out. However, it was a live class, so not everyone got to see it. So I figured for my first project today, we would actually go ahead and create a new fall wreath, kind of similar to the same style that I created the first one, but it's going to be a whole new color palette, a little bit more moody, a little bit more vibey, and I'm very excited for it. So let's jump in. I'm going to be using a ton of florals. These are so pretty, by the way. Um, and these two right here are actually from Target. And the rest of these pieces here are actually from Michael a little touch of warmth and some brown tones. And then of course, we're also gonna be using a wreath base. This is 14 inches, if you're curious. So let's do that one there. I'm gonna just kind of like put these two together, adding a bit of hot glue and just pressing it on the base. I'm gonna leave a little bit of the gold ring exposed for this one. So this is probably gonna be the furthest point of our leaf sections, if that makes sense. And something else I'm actually gonna do is grab a little bit of wire here. This one happens to be brass. Um, I got this at Michael's as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and kind of wire wrap down just our base section. I don't do this for every floral piece. However, I do like to do it on the base section just to make sure that it really stays because a lot of our next components are actually gonna be glued right on top. This is gonna be the base of our wreath. Okay, so we have our eucalyptus now and I probably wanna maybe pop this in around here-ish. I also found this little raffia pumpkin at Michael's as well, and I thought it was so freaking cute. How adorable is that? It has a little stick on top. I um, mean, I felt like this would totally give it that fall look just because it's not a traditional color palette that I'm working with. Something else you can do, you guys, is you can always layer underneath as well. So if you feel like if you put something on top and it just doesn't go well, try also placing it underneath because sometimes having that layer in the background looks really nice as well. So for example, I'm gonna put these brown ones underneath and then I'm just gonna go ahead and wire this piece down to our base. I actually wanna just go ahead and just wing it and kind of glue down this pink flower here. So I'm gonna add a whole ton of hot glue to the bottom and just press it and then it's just gonna stick where it sticks, basically. I also have a fox. I have a fox! I found a fox! <laughs> okay, I love the fox in there. It looks so cute. I just wanna go ahead and glue this guy right on. So I'm gonna add a, quite a bit of glue to the back side of him. We're just gonna stick him right down. Okay, the fox is really, really cute. I think I'm gonna keep the little pumpkin for a project in the future, or just use this as a little decor element because it's so cute. Let's just put him right here. Add a 
good generous amount of hot glue and then we're going to go ahead open that up a little bit and kind of just place it all the way in where we want it to go All we need to do to finish this wreath off is just add a hanger to the top of it. I think I'm gonna honestly use the wire as a string and then do a little lark's head knot right at the top here. This is a really thin gauge wire, so it's pretty malleable, which is quite nice. So I'm gonna do a little thin kind of strip there and then right at the top, I'm honestly gonna tie it into a knot just like you would your traditional string. And that finishes off your brand new fall wreath, which how cute is this, you guys? I love the way that this project turned out, so. That's project number one. Of you guys know I have a amazing fireplace in my new apartment it's in the living room area and I thought it would be so cute to create kind of like a little tassel garland that I can drape across the fireplace because it is a faux fireplace I picked up some new supplies for this project I have a yarn here this one's like a thicker one I thought this would add a nice chunkiness to the tassel and it has some fall colors in it I also got this set of wooden beads in different kind of sizes and shapes and then I picked up this because it was on sale I thought it was pretty kind of had some fall tones in it as well they're like little metallic beads my phone case is super dirty don't dodge I need a new one but I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this around let's do two three four five I want these to be super chunky six seven so I wrapped it around my phone 35 times which I know sounds like a lot but trust me guys it's going to look perfect. And then traditionally for my tassels, I'll cut off two of the same exact string. However, for this tassel, it's going to be a little bit different because I wanna add beads. So I'm actually gonna be using a thinner string and not the yarn. And I'm going to slip this right under all of the strings or yarn sections, pull it right up to the top there, snip off the excess, leaving a good generous amount right up here. And then we're gonna tie this in a super tight knot to gather all of that right at the top. We could then go ahead and pull all of our strands off of our phone or a piece of cardboard, whatever you were using to create your tassels. I just thought the phone would kind of be a perfect length. So I'm gonna lay this string out flat and then put our little tassel on top. And then we're gonna tie it right up towards the top. So just like that and cut all of these bottom threads. So I'm gonna go in and cut these I honestly should get my actual scissors, guys. I'm using my industrial scissors, but... I'm back with my scissors. So we're gonna go ahead and cut all of those loops on that tassel. And then you're also gonna wanna go ahead and kind of trim them to make them all the same length. And then what I'm going to be doing is we're gonna be adding beads to both of these strands here and then to both of these strands here as well. It adds a really cute vibe. The nice thing about this thread as well is it's pretty stiff. So I should be able to put the beads right on without having to put a needle on there. I lied, I added a needle. <laughs> they were literally getting caught and snagged on the inside of the beads, so it kind of started separating, but the needle makes it very easy. So I'm gonna add like, maybe two more beads onto here. And then once you reach the end of your section, just go ahead and tie a knot at the bottom. So they stay nice and secured on there. And then we're gonna work on the top section of the beads here. So all I'm going to do is place a large bead first. So I kind of wanted this hexagon one. I thought it was pretty cool. And then we're gonna go in and add one of these metallic beads. So we're gonna add one of the maybe gold metallic beads. I think it adds a little nice touch there. And then maybe one more of our circle beads. That's good, that's a good tassel right there. I love the way that this turned out and we are going to actually be creating about probably seven more of these so we have eight of them. So I am back with all of the tassels added with the beads on them. So they all look amazing. And it literally looks like I didn't even create a dent in my wood beads at all, which is quite nice. So I'll be able to use these for future projects as well. To create the garland, I'm going to be using the same string that I used to add the beads to. And I'm going to honestly start probably a little bit out. I was gonna originally add some beads to this garland, but I think I'm just gonna leave it minimal and just let the tassel shine. Just double knot on our tassels. So all you have to do is go right over left 
just like that. Pull tight. And then we're gonna go left over right. And once again, pull tight so that way your tassel's nice and secured on there. You're just gonna grab those two edges, snip the tails. And that is going to fasten one of your tassels to our garland. So here we have one tassel on there. I actually lied. I do want to add some beads to this. I think it looks a little bit plain just having a normal string as the garland. So, and I think I'm just going to go ahead and do like maybe one, two, three. There's no rhyme or reason to this either. Maybe like four beads on this side. I just think the beads add a nice little touch. So that's what that's going to look like. I'm going to add one knot right here. by just kind of creating a simple knot and making sure that it butts right up to that bead. I added about a six inch gap in between the knots here and I'm going to go ahead and string on a couple of beads and then we're going to add our tassel and we're just gonna tie this right on to the string. So this is our garland so far. I'm going to continue this all the way down. Just make sure to leave the same amount of gap in between each tassel section. That way you have consistency all the way down your piece. But I'm gonna continue this on and that'll finish off our garland. All right, you guys, our garland is completely done. How cute is this? I think it is so fun. Again, kind of like a non-traditional fall decor piece. Now last year I created some velvet pumpkins using some velvet fabric and then some polyfill and it was just like a really cute little project. But this year I was like, let's create some like restoration hardware, like really chic, unique kind of canvas style pumpkins. So I'm going to be using this drop cloth here. And, and as you guys might be able to tell, I have used this drop cloth quite a bit already for painting projects, whatever it might be. I'm flipping this over so I can see what I'm working with here and I'm going to cut out kind of like a square shape out of this fabric because basically what we're gonna wanna do is create a circle. So it's probably easier to go from a square down to a circle than this huge fabric chunk. Here is our square shape. I'm going to flip this over, fold it in half, and then I am just going to freehand this because I freehand everything. I'm going to freehand half of a circle out so that way when we open it, we should have a full circle or what is close enough to a circle. And you guys are gonna see why this is very, forgivable. You do not need a perfect circle at all. So the next step is to flip this over so that we have the wrong side facing us. And I'm going to go ahead and grab my little thread here. I'm going to pull off a decent amount. So once you have your needle and thread, we're going to go ahead and just literally go back and forth all the way around the entire diameter of the circle that we created. And this is why it's forgiving because if you do have some sections that are maybe like bulging out of your circle, it's actually gonna make your pumpkin kind of a little bit more of an organic shape. The more circular the circle is, the more circle the pumpkin will be, if that makes sense. I'm gonna be grabbing some polyfill and I've had this in my stash from past projects. We're going to be filling up our pumpkin with the polyfill. You're gonna wanna add a decent amount um, because we're also gonna be doing one other step, which will kind of need the pumpkin to be pretty fluffy for. Once we have our pumpkin nice and full, you're going to grab your strings and just tie them. Do it just one single overlap and pull that snug so it really cinches right at the top there. You can kind of mush this. And this is why I thought it would be really fun to kind of have that paint texture on there because look how cute that turned out. And I'm gonna go up through the bottom of the pumpkin all the way so you can kind of feel it. We're gonna wrap this around one side and then push it right back up through the hole and back through the top again. I wanted to see if this would kind of create very like pumpkin-y pleats in the edges, which it definitely will. This is why I was saying that it's nice to have a very fluffy pumpkin because then all of that polyfill will kind of fill in these little pieces that we're creating. Now from the top of the pumpkin, it actually looks pretty much the same. However, from the side, you can actually really see that kind of pleated edge. All we have to do to finish off this pumpkin is to put a little stump in it as the top. And that's literally all we're gonna be doing for this project. Some really cute and simple drop cloth pumpkins. These are great because you can make a ton of them with one drop cloth and literally decorate like your entire place with some cute drop cloth pumpkins. So I'm gonna kind of twist this into the base. How cute is this project? Like, these are so cute, you guys.
this, I love them. Oh my gosh, I love the touch of actual like paint on them. So if you have a drop cloth and you're gonna wanna do this and maybe it doesn't have paint on it, maybe go ahead and paint it a little bit first. finishes off today's video. I hope that you enjoyed these three projects and they're getting you in the mood for fall because I definitely am for sure. And if you guys liked the first episode of Drew It Yourself, let me know in the comment section below. I would love to do this more often for you guys. Like, did you feel like this was a little bit more personal? Was it a little bit more fun? Did you not like it? I love any constructive criticism, so definitely feel free to leave it in the comment section below. And if you are not already, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I post brand new home decor and DIY content every single week. And make sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you did enjoy. It definitely helps out my channel. And last but not least, do not forget to check out Lone Fox Home on Instagram, where I post tons of inspo photos, um, stories, keep you guys updated with all of everything that I am doing, and all of that kind of stuff. Last but not least, before letting you guys go, do not forget that the Heritage Collection for Lone Fox is launching Thursday the 17th, so keep your eyes peeled for that. I'm going to post more information on that over on Instagram. You're probably actually going to get first access over on Instagram, so if you want to head over there, make sure to do so, because the collection is so freaking cute, and I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. So I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go and I'll catch you all in my next video. Bye guys.